This is why you should get all cat spayed. So you don't find this in your living room when you leave the door open. Come here. Ooh. Come here. Ugh. You're a vicious little dog, aren't you? What are you doing in my house? You scratching me. For this segment, we're going to look at two vans, starting with this Dodge Promaster City. We'll also be looking at this 2015 Kia Sedona minivan. Now we're going to cover the Ram version first, mainly because this is a very unusual vehicle. And at first, I really didn't want to drive it. I thought it was kind of goofy looking, and it just wasn't my style. But after driving it, I think I'm beginning to like it, and you'll see why. Now this of course is the side view, and the side doors operate like this. With the passenger door being conventional and the cargo door being a slide version. Now this is the cargo version. It holds 1800 pounds in the rear and has around 131 cubic feet of storage. And you got all kinds of holes in the side panels here for hooking cages and boxes and well, whatever people use for their plumbing and repair businesses. And on the floor we get a bulletproof non-slip surface. Now the front does have two bucket seats, but they also make a passenger van version of this that sits five people. It's a three-row bench seat that fits in this spot right here. Now this van has two features that you will really appreciate once you get driving. Number one, Unlike other vehicles I've been driving lately, the dash does not reflect into the windshield regardless of the sun's angle. So you don't have all that glare in your face. Very important for people who go on long drives. So somebody was paying attention. Secondly, these seats don't look very fancy. Trust me, these are very heavy duty industrial grade seats as you find in law enforcement vehicles. Doesn't matter how long you sit in them, 4 hours, 8 hours, 12 hours, you're always comfortable. Also very important for someone who uses vans for a living. And above the driver and passenger you have a storage bin area up there with a net to keep things from falling on your head. Now this entire interior has very very simple controls, very easy to use and one that stands out is the climate control system here which should be the standard for any vehicle on the planet. How simple is this? Three simple knobs and a couple of buttons. Even an orangutan could figure this out. This is the way to do it. Actually, this climate control system is so easy to use, I don't think that even Obama or Joe Biden could screw it up. Oops, did I say that? I suspect I'll have a couple of emails coming on that one. A couple of 12 volt DC outlets here. Where's that 120 volts? That's 12 volts. Hey, I'm just reading it, folks. But we know what they do, right? Very simple gauge cluster. Easy to read. And a nice size glove box. Plenty of room in there. Now, the only engine offered is the 2.4 liter Chrysler, putting out 178 horsepower. Yes, it is a four cylinder. Is connected to the Chrysler 9-speed automatic transmission. EPA mileage on this is 21 to 29 miles per gallon. In the real world, I'm getting around 23 in the city, 26 in mixed, and around 28 to 29 on the highway depending on speed. And I'd say that's pretty good. And by the way, this is not a lightweight vehicle. It looks it, but the base weight starts around 3,450 pounds. Add more with seats. So does it have the power to pull the weight? Absolutely. This thing's got a lot of guts. Nice brakes too. 
which is why I have a hundred pounds of cargo that just about caved my head in back here when it slid on the floor. By the way, this isn't a sports car, but you know the steering has excellent feedback and the handling's pretty good for a vehicle that's kind of front nose heavy. This is a very pleasant vehicle to drive. I was very surprised. Okay, we saw how this vehicle performs in the daytime. Let's see how the headlights perform in the dark. Okay, here we go. Here we have the low beam. Nothing great, but okay for city driving. Let's try the high beams. Oh, now we're talking. That's a pretty strong setup there. Great for high speed freeway driving or backcountry roads. So there you go. Now apparently these do not come with spare tires, although I did find a cavity underneath the body panel where a spare tire might fit. Instead they give you this little air pump thing that, uh, well, okay for city driving I guess, but on the freeway forget it. So I had to get a bunch of extra cans of stop leak or fix flat, whatever you want to call it. I do suggest you get a spare tire and jack on this vehicle to save you a lot of problems. Now you might have to fork up extra for a spare tire and jack, but hey, for the $26,000 price tag on these, I don't think it's going to be a problem. The price is certainly reasonable. And not to be frank with you, when I first saw this vehicle, I didn't really want to drive it. It looked kind of dorky and, well, what else can I tell you? It doesn't look very conventional either, but now that I've driven it, I kind of like it. With the second row set of seats, a low price tag, good fuel economy, good driving characteristics, and the Chrysler discounts, you can definitely get into one of these pretty cheap. So if you're looking for a van or a cargo vehicle for work or play, this might be worth a look for you. Now for those of you who want a more conventional van, we'll switch over to the Kia that's coming up. This is the 2015 Kia Sedona minivan. It has a redesigned body style for 2015 here from the front and the side with the sliding doors like so and of course the rear and it is open electrically as we see for those too lazy to lift it by hand lots of deep storage back here and some flat space with the seats folded these are third row seats, of course. I've been looking for the spare tire, but haven't found it yet. Now the advertising says this fan seats seven, but with six bucket seats, I think we're down one seat on this particular model. We have lots of room in the second row seating, and here's a view of the interior. The quality materials and workmanship is very good, but this is the deluxe model. In fact, this is the SXL model, to be exact. Now, the base fan starts around $26,000. This one's loaded up with all the goodies, so at $43,295. Wow. Now, Kia says that this is basically an all-new car with a new platform, new body, redesigned cabin, new engine, new driveline. All new, they say. Now there are several reasons why I bring this up. Mainly it's no secret in the auto industry and in the consumer world that the early Kia Sedona vans were not very reliable, especially the ones between 2002 and 2006. Lots and lots of problems, but it was Kia's first attempt at a van, so we can overlook that. And over time the quality improved and the Kia Sedona van became a nice vehicle to have, but they redesigned this, so why not redesign it with a new name instead of the old name? I mean, it's not like Ford makes an Edsel name anymore, right? But that's Kia's decision, not mine. So we have a brand new van with the old Kia Sedona name. And I suspect Kia might not be too happy about me mentioning the problems they had with the earlier vans, but hey, it's no secret. In fact, you can probably find most of that information on the web. So with that behind us, let's look at this new vehicle and see how it performs. Okay, let's start with some of the good features, and we can begin with the 3.3 liter V6, putting out 276 horsepower. 
Now the EP rating on the price sticker is 17 in the city, 22 on the highway, and 19 in mixed. When this vehicle was delivered to me from the highway, it said 28 miles per gallon. I've been doing a lot of city mixed driving, getting around 21 miles per gallon. So I'm doing far better than what I should be. No complaints here. And it's hooked to a six-speed automatic transmission. Now Kia has been copying the good features of Japanese cars for some time, so I wasn't expecting any complaints in here, and I don't see any. The gauge cluster is well designed, easy to read. Simple steering wheel shape. And simple radio controls. Volume on, tune, and the stations. Can't get any easier than that. Thumbs up for the climate control too. Temperature knob, fan speed, then the vent buttons. Don't need to read the owner's manual for this either. The glove box is a decent size and we get a second glove box on top. A medium sized console. Coin accessory tray. Now we have the optional camera system. This is the view for the rear and this is the bird's eye view all around the vehicle so you don't go bumping into things it makes it easier to park well worth the money now we had a drive mode button on this particular vehicle as you can see on the dash it provides comfort mode eco mode or standard mode I think I'll pass on the eco mode I mean if you're worried about something like that you should be driving a monster vehicle like this I think so let's take it out for a drive and see how it does before we get started, there is one gripe I had right off the bat, and as you can see how the dash is reflecting in the windshield on a sunny day, this is very annoying. Now this engine isn't as smooth and quiet as what you get on Toyota and Honda vans, but it is very, very strong and quick. Lots of pulling power. The brakes are absolutely perfect. The ride is a bit on the firm side, but not uncomfortable. And here we go over the railroad tracks. Hardly felt a thing. Heard it, but didn't feel it. And the steering feel and corner ability is excellent for a van. It's more like a car. Very comfortable to drive. Now there are a lot of people who test vehicles on YouTube. Unfortunately, almost all of them test vehicles in the daytime only, never at night. So there's no way to evaluate the headlight performance until the consumer buys the car and finds out they have a lousy system. And trust me, there are a lot of bad systems out there. In fact, some of the headlights I've used are dangerous, especially some of these high output units we see on European cars. So with that in mind, we'll take the Hyundai out for a little night spin and see how these work. Hmm, what do we have here? Oh, how nice, a heroin syringe. I see the hookers are out again tonight. Okay, here we have the brights on. Excellent, lots of view, lots of brightness. Now we have the low beam. Once again, pretty good. Doesn't cut off low to the ground. No problems here. And going down this dark street, you can see how the brights light everything up. Low beams are doing just as well at close range. So I give the headlights a pass. Just for the record, with a bunch of freeway driving at 75 miles per hour and some of this back road dirt driving at around 45 to 50 miles per hour, we're seeing gas mileage around the 25 to 27 miles per gallon area, which I think is about the best we're going to see. Now an update on the spare tire situation. I made some phone calls and it appears this does not come with a spare tire, although they do give you a jack, a wrench, and a cute little bag to wrap a spare tire in if you choose to get one, which I suggest you do. 
So what do you do if you get a flat? I was told if I get a flat to call the 1-800 number on the windshield here in Kia but send the nearest repair facility out to come repair the flat. Part of the service you get when you buy a Kia. A nice stop. You see I'm driving out here in the middle of nowhere. And the nearest repair facility looks like this. I think I'm going to have a long wait for roadside assistance if I get a flat. Oh, lovely. I'm parked right next to a killer bee nest. Mm, don't move too fast. Now seriously folks, I'm sure the Kia Roadside Assistance Program works quite well. I'm just having a bit of fun here, but seriously, you need to have a spare tire on this vehicle or any other vehicle you drive. And that way you won't need roadside assistance to begin with. I mean, the last thing you want to do is get stranded out in the middle of nowhere and end up spending the night in a place like this. I don't think the bees would approve. Now just to be on the safe side, I'm carrying a couple of cans of fixed flat foam. Good thing I brought some extras. I'll have one for the tire and some foam to spray that beehive. Okay, we're done with the driving test, so let's look at the vehicle conclusion. Now price sticker wise, the 45 grand price on this isn't much less than what we see on Japanese vans. The difference is Japanese vans rarely discount much. I saw an ad from a Kia dealer the other day, they were discounting five to six grand. So that's one thing to consider. Also keep in mind that most of the Japanese vans are loaded up with everything but the kitchen sink. It's hard to find a base vehicle on the lot. There are more base vehicles on the Kia lot. Another thing to consider if you're looking to save money on a cheaper car. And as far as driving characteristics, I certainly have no complaints. Drives quite well, whether in the city or on the freeway. And you do get one of the best warranties in the business. So bottom line, if you're shopping for a van, you ought to at least give the Kia a look before you sign on the dotted line. Meow, 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 meow.